What's up, quarantined America? Oh my gosh. And all over the world. Covidites and coronavirusites. Welcome to the Corona Chaos episode. Oh where we my gosh. We debunk all sorts of crazy um, That's not happening. theologies. That's not happening. And, and uh, what are conspiracy theories about the coronavirus, Jason? You have Our been next saying, guest is Alex Jones. <laughs> Jason, you've been saying some as, crazy things to me in as, secret about the coronavirus. I've seen on the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> Actually, we're going to be interviewing Joe Rogan today. I wish. That would be a great conversation. I wonder what he'd have to say about things. You know what I like about him? Tell me. Have you ever watched any of his stuff? Welcome to the We Love Joe Rogan show. I actually have only listened to a couple episodes. But hey, I bet that would be really good for keyword search if we did a I Love the Joe Rogan podcast podcast. Right. We would show up in all kinds of search uh, search opportunities. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I really like how whenever he's interviewing someone, he just seems so engaged. Like He is like, I don't know. Have you ever seen him blaze up? Yeah. And then like laugh at his own jokes. <laughs> it's pretty singing funny. That I mean, won't happen here. Thought. Oh, okay. No. <clears throat> well, I mean, we we do border Colorado, so it's a matter of time before. It is a matter. You know, our state is just surrounded. Everyone's just lighting up and we're just here. The smoking dogs We're podcast. just here being blazed by the Lord. Yeah. He's that's lighting right. us up on the inside out. He's, the inside he's out. a consuming fire. So how, how are you, how are you doing with being at home quarantined? I feel like this drives you crazy just being cooped up. Actually, you know what? It's it's been a good break from the traditional daily grind of going in and out of the office, sitting in front of a computer for hours on end. Yeah, it's it's been good. So, I mean, granted, the situation sucks for you know everybody, and it's a lot worse for some. But it's been good for me to uh, be able to work at home, and Kim's been working from home, and so I've been able to see a lot more of my family recently. That's been that's been kind of nice for me. Do you um, ever take your laptop outside and work outside? Yes. Yeah, I do, I do. too. It's been kind of fun. Nice. And I, you know, I was really interested when the 30 day stay at home order hit Candace. I asked a bunch of people on Facebook, like, hey, are you doing any fitness challenges? And everybody was like, fitness pizza in my mouth, fitness stay at home and eat all the tacos I can. And I'm, I'm just like, like punch I, sh- you in the I know, face. I'm just like, get, get out of here with that nonsense. I was looking for like real people who are serious about actually taking this time seriously. You so, wanted to have an actual dialogue on Facebook about serious things? Gosh, I know. No, foolish How, where, me. Why would you go looking <clears throat> for that? I have no idea. Uh, yeah. Mm, and so you actually, he. you actually hit me up mm. at like night and you were like, Hey man, just a couple days ago. And yeah. you threw out a challenge to me that I so, did not want to do, but I'm doing with you. Yeah. Awesome. So I jumped on YouTube and so I, I bought this pull up bar system thing. It's like dips, pull ups, push ups, and uh, knee raises, knee like raises, ab stuff. Yeah. And so I paid 50 bucks on Amazon marketplace, put Which this thing in my sweet garage deal because yeah. it's like a pro piece of equipment. Oh, it's legit. Um, uh, but anyways, I, I looked up on YouTube how to do proper pull-ups and watch some guy talk about it. Well, now I get all these suggested videos and one of them was like a 30 day challenge. What, what happened when I did a hundred pushups a day for 30 days? And I was like, Oh snap. So I watched it and it looked like he got some good results. I thought, Hey, why not? I'll do my, my quarantine fitness challenge. And so then I looped you in on it. Yeah. And today's day three. Today is day three. And I have zero pushups under my belt. I have 30 done. Dang, so far. son. Yeah, I got 30 done. I will say that I am very sore. Mm-hmm. I'm hurting. I uh, like my, my, like my chest was pretty much shot after the first day. So now I feel like I'm getting into like all the secondary. I'm ready to get rid of the moobs. But yeah, me too. Please. Lord, no more moobs. For the love of God. <laughs> for the love of all that is good and holy. Put on a bra, man. <laughs> <laughs> But, but my triceps, my neck, like, dude, my neck, I I did something. So I, I must've been dropping my head or something when I was doing pushups and I got like, got to keep it straight up now. Pushups, not neck ups. I don't know. But my triceps, uh, my lats, like the, what are the, the uh, upper, the upper dorsimus connected (laughs) Connected to to the the latimus, the latimus. I uh, just did a hundred of those. I don't know if you heard me or not, but I'll tell you this, man. I feel like a badass doing pushups all day long. Like I feel like it. Hell yeah, boy. It just, it feels good to be doing something physical. It does feel good to be doing something. Also, I want to give a shout out, shout out to seek, go create podcast. Tim Wenders actually won a, an, an annual membership to the masterclass online. And so I recently started a writing masterclass um, and so I'm pretty excited about that. Been doing that. So trying to buff my body and buff my mind, bro. Mm. What are you doing to buff your get spirit? Your, get your mind buff, homie. Do what you even you, lift? I, I don't. I just lift my body weight. Spiritually, I don't mess with that stuff. Okay. I didn't think so. Mm-mm. Yeah. 
Actually, I've been studying some of the Hebrew letters and I'm having some pretty cool revelation from that stuff. But well, I'm glad that you're so far above us that you have to go to the Hebrew to actually pull something from the Bible. Pretty much. I mean, Ephesians tells me that I'm seated in the heavenly realm. So if you want to talk about that, I'm just way well, out If you there. want to talk about the Tim Shul, we can talk about <laughs> So, t- so, uh, so you, you actually have a prayer request. We don't get a lot of these on the, yeah, on the podcast, but you've yeah, got man. one too. You know, gosh, our, our family right now, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but our family right now is just going through a very, very, very hard season. Um, maybe at a later date, I will share details. I mean, honestly, it, I, I'm involved in it, but it's not my story to tell, um, and so, you know, we're just asking for prayer, you know, specifically for my wife and um, just the season that we're in right now. It's it literally at times feels like the worst time to be going through something that is so monumental in our life um, because of COVID that's going on and everything yeah. like that. But, um, yeah, just be praying for us. Uh, be praying for her specifically. Be praying um, that we would just have peace in the midst of a chaotic situation Amen to that. and be praying that as we are making decisions as a family, that, uh, that, that conflict would be avoided with even extended family, yeah. you know, and that there would be grace yep. and love throughout this whole situation. Right. So, Hey, so we do have an email, salty dogs podcast at gmail.com. And let me just encourage you that if you want to send, uh, an encouraging message to Chris, you can do that through email. You can also find him on Facebook. Just search his name, uh, Christopher Cerna. But I want to encourage you guys. Uh, it's one thing to, to pray in the way that it's just throwing a bunch of words up into the sky and then hoping that something's going to change. It's a different situation to, you know, present these requests to God and then seek after his heart and his mind for the situation. You might, sure. you might get a prophetic word. And by that, I just mean the heart and the mind of God for Christopher's situation. And, um, the scripture tells us not to dis- despise that, but to also test it. And so we're open to hearing whatever you guys have to say, um, for that. I mean, there might be someone out there who just press in over the Lord and he's got a word of peace for you. So, yeah, man. And I actually got one of those the other day from, um, from a client who I had taken their photos before all this stuff went haywire and she just reached out to me and golly, it was perfect timing and just super encouraging. So I welcome any and all encouragement. Yeah. And so, uh, at a later date, you know, who knows? I may, I may go into more detail, but for now unspoken. All right. Time for our past the salt. So we like to get comments and emails from people. And so saltydogspodcast.com, go to the contact us page, shoot us an email, go to our Facebook page and you can rate and, or you can review us and rate us on Facebook, but also do that on iTunes because it helps the show. So sure. Stanley recommends Salty Dogs Podcast. That's to remember the day I opened up the Facebook app and it says so-and-so does not recommend the Salty Dogs Podcast. I, I really want that? more of those. You want, you <laughs> I want like the that. do not recommend? I mean, it was kind of cool. Yeah. I feel like if you're not saying something, Something that people disagree with. Are you really saying anything? Probably not. Jesus doesn't. I didn't. You know. I disagree with that. I think you can say stuff without. But anyways. Okay. Let's hear what See, Stanley has to say. Actually, was, was, uh, you were actually. I was. I was saying you were actually saying something by disagreeing with what you were saying. Ooh, I like that. You like that? It's nice. It's That's good. Uh, case in point. So, uh, Stanley says any organization. So apparently we're an organization trying to bring the word of God, our heavenly Father, and the grace and mercy to His Son Jesus Christ is a friend of mine. Thank you so much for being the Christians you are and keep up the good work of spreading the word of God. Amen, bro. Hey, we well, you know we're all about, I'd rather spread that than spread Corona. <laughs> so <laughs> if we're talking about things that we want to be spreading, we're just doing our um, job as Christians and spreading the love of God instead of spreading the virus. And That's we're why not you talking stay about, home. I, man, I had a really, can I make a bad joke? Is that Go okay? for it. Do it. Yeah. And we're not talking about <laughs> spreading cheeks as much as we are. <laughs> As oh, that's are, really bad. As, as we are doffing and, and wishing. Yeah, Stanley. Rosy cheeks from heaven, bro. Yeah. Right smack upside your head. Yep. Cheeks Get upside em. your head. I said cheeks upside your head. Do you remember that song? No, I don't. Oh, dang it. I'm sorry. Hey, so check this out. Very special guest today. Really awesome episode talking about permission to... What? Rest. Permission to rest. <laughs> <laughs> you totally forgot mid-sentence. <clears throat> so, we have Mr. Darren Eubanks. Let me say a little bit about him before we actually um, Allow bring him, him to on. Speak. So, so, yeah, Darren's an awesome dude. Met him through Facebook and a Christian podcaster group and realized he was from Dodge City, Kansas, out west. West side, Kansas. BB Bang. And so we're representing Wichita. We've got that Kansas connection going on. It's pretty cool. Uh, Darren is uh, he's married to Jamie. Awesome wife, right? He's got three daughters 
And uh, he's been involved in different forms of ministry for roughly or over 20 years, youth ministry, leadership, prophetic ministry. And that's going to tie into a little bit about uh, what we're talking about today. But he is the producer and the host of the Kingdom Bringer podcast. And he is producer of four other podcasts, including, if you've not heard of it, the Next Level podcast with Michael McIntyre and Supernatural Living with Beth Packard. And so Darren loves to train, equip the church, watch movies, podcasts. Podcast and uh, keep up with Kansas State football. Apparently, I live in a Jayhawk fan house, so whoop whoop. <laughs> All right, so Darren Eubanks with well, the Kingdom Bringer Podcast. What is up, my man? What's up, dude? Hey, what's going on, guys? Good, Good to, to be have here. you, homie. Yeah. What do you have to say about Darren? Uh, I will say that um, from the time that you added me into a, a text chat with you, Darren and Brad, that that thing got blown up with like. 200 plus messages i feel like daily we're friends with you guys just geeking out over podcast stuff and so that's how nice. we roll i like that darren's got a lot of good stuff to but say. we also geek out over um spiritual things and, no, and i never heard that and Not life once. and ministry and never. so we're here to talk to it was all just podcast stuff it's because you don't read all the messages christopher you're reading everything out of context just like all the christians with every bible ever oh so so with that being said <laughs> Hey, Darren, Darren. welcome. <laughs> Darren, tell us a little bit about yourself that maybe I didn't mention in that intro. I like long walks on the beach. I, mm. um, I enjoy all of the, the soothing of Dodge. sounds. Dodge, Kansas. Of, yeah. No, man, I, um, I love, I, I'm a little later to the podcast game than you guys are, I think. Um, but it's, it's Noob. something that I'm very passionate about. I love it a lot. I love my, my wife and kids. I get to see them a whole lot more right now. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. My, uh, my place of work has me working from home when possible. And it's a good thing. I actually enjoy that a lot. So yeah, I'm, uh, I am resting. I'm chilling right now. Hey, so you it's have so a, good. you have a job, you work for safety clean. Yeah. And so I have a safety clean story. Do so you? yeah, in 2008, I met a guy named Joe Boyd and he was a pastor of a youth ministry called exclamation point ministry, did their logo and volunteered for the youth ministry. Well, his idea for his youth, uh, youth ministry was to, um, to make like a youth ministry vehicle to like drive around town and, and like go do cool stuff. And so he bought an old safety clean box truck and then I'd got to design the graphics and then we did it a wrap in around the entire safety clean uh, truck. So that's my safety. And clean then whenever story. it was done, he said, that's a wrap. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then he started beatboxing. I, I think he said that pretty much. So, gotcha. yep. <clears throat> so, our episode today is called Permission to Rest. And so you have recently in your life, um, it, over 20 years of ministry experience, uh, recently you were on staff, paid in a ministry, and the Lord has done some stuff in your life that has shifted the trajectory. And and so now we, you have this message that you want to give, giving people uh, permission to rest. So kind of talk about that. I know it ties in a little bit to your blog that you wrote over at kingdombringer.com, but um, man, just kind of tell us that story. And as you, uh, as you make points and, and give some of that narrative, we may jump in and ask you some questions. Questions. For sure. Yeah, man, it's um, ministry for me has always been, it's always been something that I've strived for. Like when I was probably 15 years old, I got really involved. You guys ever heard of like lay witness missions? You ever heard of? Mm -mm. No. Nope. Basically a, a group organizes some lay people and they travel around the different churches. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, I was really heavily involved with the youth ministry portion of that. Yeah. Um, kind of strived to be, to like move up the chain in ministry. Like you, you start off as a youth pastor, right? Climb that like that's ministry what you ladder do. as yeah. they say. And then if you really make it, you get to be like a, a, a head pastor someday. And so that was always just like, that's what made sense to me. Right. Like that's all I ever knew was like church ministry in that way. And for, for just a long time, I've been involved with a lot of different ministries. Some have been a lot easier than others. Some have been um, ones that I felt like I needed to push my way into and strive to be noticed and strive to be approved and strive to be a part of. And some were just a little easier, like where people recognized like a gift or a talent that I had and kind of asked me to be a part of it. But so either way, go ahead. So when you're saying striving, maybe give us a yeah. little bit of definition or your understanding of what that, like, how did that manifest itself? Like just trying really hard or what, how would you say that? I think it's a matter of like needing man's approval. 
So like for me, Striving. 2013 for me was kind of the year that I woke up to like the Holy Spirit and woke up to like the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And so up until that point, it was just always, I needed man to approve me. I needed man to, I was just working for man's approval. I, see. And I know that's, that's kind of a cliche thing, but, um, you wanted to be is, noticed. I did. Yeah. I wanted yeah, to be noticed. Cause I, I get and that. a lot of that. A lot of that comes from like a low self-esteem in myself. Like yeah, I didn't that's why we started myself. the podcast for sure. Okay. Well, I mean, I think that you and I can, I don't know joke. if you can relate to this, but like <laughs> there's something that kind of like awakens up inside of you when a ministry leader sees something in you and goes like, oh, wow, like I want you to head up this or lead this or Endorphins? do that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. There's got to be some sort of dopamine kind of That's what I meant. kind of thing that happens when it's like, oh, wow, they see something in me. Like they want me to lead this and they want me to do that. And so it's like, it, it feels good. And it you does know, to get approval in that ministry in so many areas where it's like, ah, maybe I'm not <clears throat> cutting it at work, but at least at the church, like, damn, yeah. they think I got, I got some skills. So, so, um, how old were you? When did you maybe start to feel like you were being noticed and like actually had a place within kind of the structured church situation to be honest i never really felt like i had a place i felt oh. like I, I felt like i wanted a place and i i agree 100 percent with what chris just said and so for me personally i feel like one of the struggles that i really found in the church when i was around 30 years old or so was that i believed i had gifts and talents but i believed that no one else saw them and so I, I do put some responsibility on the church a little bit of like, why right. are we not encouraging our people? You know, why are we yeah. not looking for the best and pulling the good out of people and honoring people and their gifts? Well, and so when I woke up to the the kingdom of God and like, I really opened up to prophecy, I think was kind of the, the thing that led me into this. I realized that, um, I did hear from the Lord and mm. I had a, an awesome passion to like supernaturally encourage <laughs> people. And so for me, I wanted to lift people up, you know, and I wanted yeah. to find places where they could serve and they could minister and they could like be everything that God created them to be. And I think a lot of that comes from being a part of places that I didn't feel like I received that myself. So, so would yeah. you say that that kind of thing, like you talked about being, uh, you were awakened to the kingdom and then really started flowing in some supernatural prophecy kind of stuff. So you're saying, so for some time in your journey, you were a part of organizations or paradigms where that was kind of, was it like muted or not accepted or what would you say? Well, I mean, to be honest, I grew up like in the Methodist church. And so I grew up in like very methodical, very, um, father, son, Holy Bible, as I like to say, like, sure. Right. The Holy Spirit was kind of the crazy uncle, you know, like we just didn't really <laughs> didn't know about him, didn't talk about him much. Right. Um, Invite him to one barbecue a year. Yeah. And it was just it was seriously a matter of just not knowing him, like not knowing the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And for me, it's when you when you meet him, when you know him, when you understand him, it's like I, I don't want anything else, you know, for sure. And so. If, when I read passages in scripture with like, don't, don't dampen the Holy spirit. You know, it's like, I get it because once you know him, it's like, I want everybody to understand the Holy spirit and like yeah. the gifts and all that. Yeah. So, uh, recently I listened to one of your sermons that you gave at, at the ministry you were serving. And yeah. as soon as you got on stage, you called out like two or three people. I say called out. You acknowledged two or three people in the, in the audience that the Lord had given you a word for, and you kind of shared that and prophesied and prayed and encouraged them. Um, so you obviously had found a platform to be able to function and flow in that. How long did it take you from the age of 30 and kind of moving into this kingdom prophecy, supernatural stuff to like find a place where you were accepted or welcomed to be able to do that? Yeah. So I was a part of, I was also a part of the, the Nazarene church and okay. no, none of this Nazarenes. is meant to, say that again. Sorry. I know some Nazarenes. They're yeah. good people. And none of this, I don't want any of this to sound like, you know, I'm bashing any particular thing. This for me, for sure. this is it's just context. It is. And so when I was in the, when I was a part of the Nazarene church and I, that's where, that's where I was at when I woke up to the kingdom language and the, the understanding the kingdom of God and how it lives inside of me. 
That was kind of the big Luke 17, 21. The kingdom is not here or there. It's inside of you. It's yeah. kind of my key uh, life verse right now. And I want people to understand the power that lives inside of them. And so I was in a season where the Lord, the Lord, he called and he asked, and I, I felt it in my heart and in my spirit. I, I never like to say I heard the Lord unless I actually hear the or Lord. Or like what God said, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm never going to say that, but I, I really felt it in my spirit. And I think he has access to dropping feelings in our spirit for sure. I felt it in my spirit that he wanted me and my family to stop going to church. And so like that was, for what? me, that was a, dude, 30, <clears throat> that was 33 years of like, I'm going to church. And yeah. how long so, ago was this? Uh, se- seven years ago. Okay. Seven about. years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, six okay. years ago. Six years ago. All right. Ago. All right. Yeah. And so the Lord called me t- uh, to stop going to church. So my wife and I, who were really growing up, have you guys ever heard of Dan Moeller? You ever heard of his yes. teachings at all? Yes. So he has like the school of kingdom living. That's what woke me up to this stuff. A buddy of mine handed me oh. an MP, handed me an MP3 player full of Dan Moeller's teachings and when I started getting into the, the kingdom of God and the Holy Spirit, I'm looking around and I'm like, I'm not seeing that anywhere. Like, I don't see right. that where I'm at. And so he, my wife and I were both going through this and both kind of experiencing the same things. And we, we sat down with our, our three girls and we sat down on the living room floor one Sunday morning, which was just odd to not be at church on a Sunday morning. And we sat down with them. They were all pretty young and we're like, why do we go to church? So that was a question we asked. Why do we go to church? And we had all kinds of answers. You know, children are going to give all kinds of answers. And one of the things we, that was brought up was to learn about Jesus. One of the things was to get fed. And so we were, we had all, we had this big old list of things and we one by one would check them off of like, I don't want to send my kids to church to learn about Jesus. I'm hoping that I'm teaching them about Jesus. Oh, like snap. Ultimately. Right. I don't want to depend on the church to teach my kids about Jesus. So the, the other one was like to get fed. Well, I hope that I'm getting fed apart from the church. Right. right. And so really the last one was on this list. And the only one that stood was to build up and encourage the body. Like mm-hmm. that's the, we want to go to church to encourage the body of Christ. And so we, we, we rested in that season and we, we didn't feel permission necessarily or a call to like go back yet. And so we sat and we waited and Sunday mornings were amazing. <laughs> like yeah. sleeping in, in and not going right. to church and <laughs> wearing sweats. And we would go to the ball diamonds to the tournaments and like hand out water and just love on people and actually be the church a little bit. And bro, I can resonate with that. I mean, it's yeah. probably been, you know, I don't know. I don't remember the last time I've been to a church service. I mean, just here recently this year, just for the past couple months, like we've also stepped out of going and attending a church service. Like we have a, a, a gathering that kind of happens um, during the week. Obviously we're not getting together right now, but um, that kind of happens during the week where we get together. But Sundays are amazing. Sundays are my favorite day of the week. We, you know, we carve out a time to rest. I, I did want to ask you a question going yeah. back, like, you know, making a statement like, Hey, we really feel like God is leading us to not, attend a church service, what kind of reactions, what kind of feedback or kickback did you guys even get about that? That's yeah, a pretty so bold statement. It was a, one that I agree with, but that, that yeah. God can say to people, but a lot of people may not take it that way. I can tell you the scripture they quoted to you in opposition. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Do not forsake. Do not forsake. Yep, yeah. The assembly. That's yep. the, uh, that's the inverse right now too, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. Yep. No, I, I want to say this first. I absolutely love the church. Like I love the body of Christ. I have no issues with Sunday morning gatherings, Saturday night gatherings, whatever it is. I actually enjoy being around awesome spirit filled kingdom people. I do. And I, I want to continue to do that. Um, so in that season, when that, when that was brought up, we didn't, one thing we also didn't have was a whole lot of like solid friendships and solid relationships. Right. And so there wasn't really those relationships that we had to like, explain ourselves to okay. like we didn't feel yeah. responsible for really explaining ourselves. Um, and I didn't, I wasn't on staff or anything. I just, I worked with the youth ministry a little bit and, um, it was, it was a pretty easy step out actually. Okay. Gotcha. And what we, what we did find though, was that the relationships we did have were all Sunday morning relationships. Ouch. Like 
we just didn't communicate with anybody else that we went to church with, you know, so after recently, we stopped going to church. Yeah, that that sucks, man. And I, I know that life. And uh, I, I coined I didn't coin a phrase. I was thinking about the phrase organizational disassociation, like the fact that if I stop being a part of organization A, well, then. I, for some reason, then no longer have relationship with people who are also part of organization a, yeah. And that's, that sucks. Like I get that people can rally around a certain vision and, and values and mission, and you can do that together, but you know, it's, it's no different. It is no different than when I worked at a restaurant and I was drinking and doing drugs and partying every single night going out to the bars, hanging out with people that I thought were truly my friends. All of a sudden I stopped drinking. I put the bottle down and then I don't have any friends right, anymore. Yeah. Uh, we it is that no different. It's terrible. With my dad, same situation. You know, when, when he stopped drinking, it's like, you know, as long when there, it was like once that um, common denominator, common factor was removed, mm -hmm. it's like the relationship ends, which really sucks. It does. But I mean, you could also argue that it's, it's kind of like that for, for a lot of different things, but I think it was, you know, you felt like maybe the relationships were truly built upon like a solid foundation of like, Hey, we all love Jesus. We've been in this together for years, but the, you know, like you were expecting that those relationships may be a little stronger. I think most people probably do. And I will, I mean, I will put responsibility on me too. You know, it isn't like, I'm like, again, I wasn't in a place of like hurt, like how come nobody's a real friend. It's like, I was showing I was being shown just, I believe relationships are two sided, you know, it takes right, responsibility absolutely. from both people. And so if they're not there, it's partially my fault too. Right. But, right. But so you get, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, so you guys got to the point to where, you know, you're, you're seeing some freedom on Sunday mornings, felt like you had permission. So kind of what happens next? Yeah. So we did probably about 10 weeks, 10 weeks, about two and a half months later, we felt the Lord was like giving us permission because we kind of been building ourselves up. And with grabbing a hold of that, that call to like encourage the body of Christ. And so we felt permission to kind of step back into that place, not necessarily like doing ministry, but at least going to church with the people again. Sure. And we sat, we sat there for three or four weeks and we're like, Ugh. like we just, it was just different. You know, when you're in this place of like new understanding and new revelation, and it's like, I literally cannot play this game anymore. It's you new know? wine skin, old wine. Yes, yeah. it was. It's and like we just didn't new wine, fit new wine, old wine skin. So, and, and well, real quick and sit, Jason, be quiet. Yeah. 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 So and, <laughs> yes, tell him and, to shut up. <laughs> and so when we did in, in regards to those relationships, it was so funny because 10 weeks later, we're walking into the foyer of this church and for Dodge city, it's, it's one of the bigger churches in, in Dodge. And you know, we've got people like, Hey man, it's so good to see you. I've been, I've been meaning to call you. And I'm like, you have my number and you never called me, you know? And so there, there was a little bit of that. And that's kind of when that realization of like the true relationships Gosh. of like, we just don't really have them <laughs> and that's okay. It really is that we're, and I'm, I'll talk more about this later on, but I'm not everybody's <laughs> cup of tea and that's okay. You know, yeah. I don't have to be liked or appreciated by everybody for sure. Right. So. so what I was going to say was, you know, you, you step out for 10 weeks or so you come back, you're sitting there three or four weeks and you just kind of have this feeling you like ew, but not everybody in the room has that feeling. So right. what, how do you like, how, so I don't want people to think that what you're saying they're doing is wrong, but for yes. you, something was different. So for you, what do you feel like that something different was in you? So I feel like what we we meaning my wife and I, what we really noticed was just the way church had been functioning. Like the, the kind of church that we had access to here was a pastor, a lead guy on a stage and everyone's coming to hear what he has to say. And then they're going home. And when I realized that the kingdom and the powerful kingdom living inside of me, and I'm just sitting there and I'm not being used. And I don't mm. mean like, mm -hmm they're not pulling me up on stage and using me. I'm like, why, what's it for? What are these gatherings really for? If it's to just listen to somebody talk, 
You know, it's almost like I have the like the imagery in my mind of like if you just look like imagine every person in a congregation is a button that's got like a light on them. And then like the pastor is like, you know, the same thing on stage. And so you have this sea of just buttons and then you have one button on stage. It's like he's the only one that's active and turned on. And then you have all these other buttons that are sitting there and they're unactive. You know, they're inactive and that inactivity doesn't like light up just because they walk out of the building. It's like, no, they stay inactive. Now, sure. There are people who they serve, they, they use their giftings that they may have, but it, it does, it does usually seem like that's only in the context of building this thing, right? Which can be good and helpful as long as there's activity that's happening outside um, right. of that gathering as well. Right. Yep. So we're talking about permission to rest and you, 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 did this thing where you did 10 weeks and then you go back and then you, you kind of feel, you know, a little uneasy. So how did, how did that maybe, uh, move you forward to where you are now? Because I mean, it, it, you're, you have recently entered another season of rest. So maybe kind of walk us through that process. Yeah. So <clears throat> well, was there a jumping back into the system? Like yeah. So what happened was we, we kind of, we, we slowly entered back in just again, that's all we ever knew. And so it was like, right. this is what we have access to, or like this handful of churches around here, you know, and we didn't really feel it's, you feel like you're part of a exclusive club when you realize, holy cow, there's something different than this church, you know? And so we felt kind of lonely yeah. for sure. But some, some friends of mine, actually the same friend that gave me that MP3 player of Dan Moeller stuff, um, we had we had been really communicating about, so what's the next step, right? Starting a no, another church, like starting your own church and doing it a different way. And you, I, know, I know you guys are familiar with church planting for sure. And yes, we, we had a lot of those talks, you know, and it, you feel like you're sitting down and having business decisions and what's the next step. And obviously yep. you go get a building, right. And you go do all these things, do the thing, logo, Domes, website, yeah. flyers, yep. inviter cards. And and then that kind of died off a little bit and it took, I don't know, a few months later, I get a text from this buddy of mine who had met someone else. And it, the text was literally a graphic of a church, of a, a logo, like you just said, and it had time worship at this time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they're, they're starting something. They're doing something different. And we go to the first one and there's literally 150 people that show up and it's, in the, it's in this Zumba studio in downtown Dodge city <laughs> upstairs. And it feels like an upper room and it feels like this really oh, cool snap. thing. And it was legit. And we had worship and we had prayer and we had prophecy. And that was kind of like what we did. And that turned into the gathering of Dodge city. And it was, it was a movement. <laughs> It was a, a, a impactful, powerful movement with some young, fiery, hungry people that, you know, how a lot of these things start with like bitter church hurt people and yes. you definitely, Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. You it, definitely it have, like have those for sure. Sure. And we did too, but a lot of that was leaders were, were then shepherding these hurt people in a, in a good way. And it was great. And I'm not going to go too much into that whole thing, but that was a, that was a season of my life where I became involved again in ministry. And, and I was, so how old were you at this point? Uh, this was 2014, 15, 16. Okay. So, so, so was this a, was this a encouraging season for you? Was this a season where you came out of it, maybe feeling a little, um, still dissatisfied or maybe got burned? I mean, what kind so of, so during to go the details, but. Yeah. So during this season, it was a very encouraging thing for a okay, lot of cool. people. Like this was a, I mean, this was like, I want to say a movement. This is one of those things that you start and a lot of other church, big boy churches are calling you a cult, you know, of like, this oh. is a cult because it's different and it's all these things. And Yikes. for me personally, I'm like, sweet. Like they recognize like, that we're doing cults. things different. <laughs> yes. That's the cult of personality. <laughs> yeah. And so we were going after it and it was good. Long story short. Uh, there was a bitter moment. There was a sour exit for me and my family gotcha. um, <clears throat> that led me into another. It's, I mean, it's just, over a four or five years. It was literally this for me and up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah. And 
I went into a kind of a wilderness season after that of like, I don't get it. This is, this was supposed to be the thing. This was supposed, this is what I strived for was that. Yeah. And I was welcomed into another ministry here in town, another cult. (laughs) This was an established (laughs) church. So this was an established church that wanted to do things differently. And so they brought in some, some people and we, they noticed that a change was needed. And so we, we literally started a fivefold ministry structure inside of this, this church. So and fivefold, you mean a past Ephesians four, apostle, right, prophet, right. evangelist, shepherd, yeah. teacher. Yeah. Right. Believing, believing that Jesus gave the church, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the equipping of the saints. And so right. we, we considered ourselves an equipping center, a training center. Yeah. And it was good. We were all learning about this thing together and we were all like understanding our gifts and flowing and what we were called to, to be in and time frame. How long ago was this? Like this the start was, of entering this one? was like two, like two years, uh, actually officially like January of 19. So about okay. a year oh. ago. Okay. Yeah. So this is still pretty fresh. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. About, about a year ago, um, a little over a year ago, we started this thing and it's five brothers. I mean, five close friends doing this together and, Th- so this season I'm in right now is exiting that. Okay. And so it's very fresh and I love them and I love that ministry and I love what's going on there. Um, but for the first time I feel permission to not have to strive for church ministry and I'm kind of entering this. Okay, God, what next season? So maybe take us back a little bit because I know what it's like to, kind of be functioning in a paradigm and being a little uneasy and discontent, but it's where you are. It's where God has placed you. And then sometimes you have these little thoughts creep in like, man, it'd be nice to just stay home today. Or, you know, when do you feel like you actually started to have to have permission to maybe entertain those thoughts and maybe not feel so guilty or like dirty for thinking about, you know, Oh, you know, I'm going to step out of this or what would it be like kind of situation? Yeah. So I was kind of, I was kind of running the, uh, the prophetic stream of this ministry. And I personally experienced a lot of attack and I experienced a lot of, uh, witchcraft even coming against me and my family and a lot of, a lot of religion and a lot of stuff that rose up to shut down the prophet and the prophetic. And a lot of the difficulty was honestly, this was like, again, an established church that we came into to try to change it from the inside out. Right. I, I will say the idea of church planting and kind of starting from scratch is probably easier than what we were trying to do. Oh, for sure. So church planting versus like church revitalization. Kind yes. Of. Yeah. Yes. And so that, I mean, that pushback, you know, I get it. Paul experienced it. The disciples all died for this. I get it. I was in a place where I was like, is this freaking worth it? Like I, I honestly got into this sour place of like, I am spending three or four days a week focusing on ministering and encouraging and building people up through prophecy. And I'm getting hated on and I'm getting blasted on Facebook and I'm getting like total pushback. And so for me, it was like the big question for me was, is this worth it? And so that led me into a season of questioning a lot of things. I questioned my call. I questioned whether or not I was ever called to ministry because mm-hmm. it hasn't been easy. Like ministry for me has never been easy. It's always been difficult and borderline joyless <laughs> at times. Gosh, and that's so, so interesting considering like the conversation that we had, like episode one of this season talking about the easy yoke of Jesus and how ah. like when we yoke up to Jesus, how like... You know, Jesus says, my burden is easy. My yoke is light, you know, and he's talking about like, you know, when we yoke up to him, when we connect with him and when we're like striving with him, like that whole concept versus what I feel like, um, I would say most, maybe not. I mean, and most could be if there's, uh, it could be 51% instead of 49. That's still most, you know, it's the greater percentage. Yeah. I feel like that's most people's experience within ministry. Yeah. It's not life giving. It's not easy. It's not hard. And so then, you know, you have other people that will push back and they go, Oh, the disciples got killed for it and this and that. And then all this stuff happened. But it's like, but why it's like, we can, we can take these words of Jesus, but we're going to neglect these words of Jesus where he says, no, this, this should be easy. This should be light. And then we tend to put it on ourselves and go, 
or people cast it back on us and it's like, well, you were doing something wrong well, or yeah. your faith wasn't enough when it's like, ah, I don't really well, know I about had, that. Like there's this tension. I had a mentor tell me when I stepped into church planting, he said, this will be the hardest thing you ever do in your life. And I mean, but then Jesus says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. So, I mean, I get that there's persecution, there's pushback. Like we go through the the daily death of self and all that stuff's a struggle. But I guess I kind of wonder, you know, why is it so, why does it seem so difficult or so burdensome right. when Jesus promises that? So, so back to your story, Darren. So I just feel like, I mean, and I did, I got, I had some really good, uh, I had some good mentors and some good, some good friends that had good. spoken some truth. One person that I, re I reached out to during this time of questioning, cause I felt, I felt weird. Like, why am I questioning? Like, this is everything I wanted, like to encourage the body of Christ. I have a platform. I have permission to do this. I have brothers running with me and I was questioning everything. And I, you know, the whole idea of like Paul's thorn, you know, everybody's like, Paul had a thorn brother. And I'm like, I get it, but this sounds miserable. Like if, if this is what the Christian life and ministry is all about, right? I don't know that I want this right now of like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and there were other factors too. For instance, Bro, like I, the, I really got into podcast. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, Get no, I'm sorry. Do you I have a question? No, I was just going to say that I, I appreciate you being honest with that yeah. statement because that's a very real feeling that people have that I don't feel like they can say and vocalize. Like if this is what this is like, I don't want any, I don't want any part of it. Like that's a very <laughs> real feeling and that people will equate people, leaders, church pastors will equate with, bro, that's, you, you just don't have enough faith, you know, like, and it's like, I don't know if that's what it is because I'm, I want to, I want to believe, I don't want to have these questions. I don't want to have these doubts, right. but I can't help but feel the way that I feel in this yeah. moment. Yeah. So Darren, talk about, um, the Lord entering that situation in that time where you're having these thoughts and wondering these things, because just like you said, man has all kinds of ways, uh, typically using scripture to then say, Hey brother, you know, I'm a little boy, a little bit worried about you, or that's a little dangerous, you know, like, slippery slope. or it's a slippery slope or, you know, man, I, I just feel bad for Darren. Like his, you know, he, his faith, I just don't know that it's there for, you know, like questioning yeah. your character, your faith, that kind of stuff. So man's maybe bringing that on you. You might be bringing that on yourself, but enter Jesus and everything's different. So talk about that transition. Yeah. So I, I really felt, and I'll, I'll be honest too, the, this Corona outbreak has helped because I feel like yeah. it's led all of us into a place of rest. Right. And like mm -hmm. either forced or not, but I and feel like people are still struggling with that whole resting thing, man. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. It is. Hey, uh, Darren Lee Adams on Facebook said that's a staph infection. That's my boy. That's my mentor <laughs> Lee Adams right there. Yeah. He's the one that coined that. Awesome. Yeah. So, so the Rona. I, What's that? The Rona. The Rona. The Rona. <laughs> it helped. Yeah, it helped because, I mean, I was for like, I literally kind of officially resigned like the week before this whole thing kind of came out of like needing to stay home and right. is church, is church going to happen and stuff. So maybe it was an easier <laughs> transition than, which I'm going to say is the Lord too, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But I think the whole idea of having permission to rest because I think so many people in ministry think they have to go through this suffering. They have to go through this crap. They have to strive. And that's where the striving came from for me. It's like, yeah, this is hard, but it's what I'm called to do. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to go. And there's a place for that. But what's the motivating factor behind that? Like, why, why do churches and pastors feel like we got to push through this? Like, what's the big gem that's like, this is worth it. Like, I, what do you guys think that is? I think maybe it's different for everybody. But if you had to look at like maybe the most common denominator, <laughs> is it salvations? Is it souls being one to the king? Like what, what is it? Like what's that thing that makes all of the pain, all of the suffering, all of it worth it? Like that well, they would say like, we have to put ourselves through this. In regards, I'm, for me, I think there's a level of like, um, I, I don't know. There, there was a friend that I was talking to about this and I was asking him for prayer during this questioning phase. And he just, he asked the same question. He's like, that sounds miserable. <clears throat> like, are we called to live miserable lives? You know, <laughs> there's something about the fruit of the spirit being produced. And if you're not in a place of like, 
that being produced, maybe there's something wrong. And so that's where I was questioning a lot of things. Like, okay. have I ever, have I ever been called to ministry? Cause this is <laughs> am, I, am I even a Christian? So, like, where's the fruit? So yeah. help me understand how, and if it's even possible, if joy and misery can exist in the same situation. They can. I think there is, if we're living like this Holy Spirit lifestyle, then we're seeing those fruits produced when they need to be produced, I feel like. So in a place of misery, that's where joy is going to come, right? In a place of hurt, that's where that comfort comes from. But when you're talking about like, oh, I'm miserable in this ministry situation, how's that... You see what I'm saying? Have, I'm not trying to stump can you I, either. Can I reword like, this question? Sure. sure. Yeah, go for so, it. So is it possible that maybe, um, can joy and misery exist over a lifetime or is it like joy or misery maybe yeah. exist within seasons? You know, like, are we to be people who just live this life where it's just, you know, misery over your whole life, but you're just still supposed to find joy because right now with the season that I'm going through and the things that our family's struggling with, like I can tell you like it, it, it's some of the most faith building stuff that I've ever gone through in my life. It's the, it's hard as hell. It's, it's so hard. And I could ne I cannot imagine. I'm just being honest a right. world where I am in this state of misery or testing lifelong. or trial, whatever, like lifelong. Yeah. I just don't see that happening. I mean, it, but these seasons, even if they're longer seasons, you know, a year, two years, like I could, I can see that. But I mean, even the Lord operates in seasons in the Bible, like, you know, with, with years of, of, um, reaping and harvesting and all this good stuff that's happening. But there's also seasons of, of so I'm just wondering if it's like, is, are we supposed to be in a place where we can live in this lifelong misery with joy there? Or is this most more so like season type things that we go through? Hmm. I think it's like a, it comes down to the fact of like, am I called to stay in this misery? You know, yeah. like it come, mi misery is going to come, discomfort is going to come. And I think for a lot of people, they think that's what Christians are supposed to do. We're like supposed to suffer and just suffer underneath. <laughs> Jesus the... carried that cross. Jesus got spit on. We should too. Right. You know? But, but there are crosses that maybe the Lord puts upon us. And then there are crosses that are like man-made crosses that it's like, God's like a man. I never called you to carry that. Like, I didn't want you to carry that cross. Like you're under this, you know, staff infection as your buddy put it. And, and it's like, dude, I'm not working there. I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say that God's not working in certain ministries or things like that. But there are certain situations that I think are definitely man-made crosses as opposed to crosses to bear that God is, is bringing our way. No, that's yeah, good. That, I think that's it's good. important to, I mean, discernment, we have the spirit of God living in us. scripture says that we have the mind of Christ. Um, the word of God's living and active. It's sharp to judge the thoughts and the attitude of the heart. And so for me, it boils down to relationship with the Lord. What is he saying? Are you giving ear to the words of God? Are you allowing him to judge the thoughts and the attitude of your heart so that in your place of misery, you can say, are you trying to do some sort of character revitalization in me right now? Are you trying to, what are you trying to teach mm -hmm. me in this? And then also the question, should I stay or should I go now? Right. That's, that was the question for you, Darren, that yeah. you posed a couple of weeks ago, should I stay or should I go? And so you're in the process of discerning that <clears throat> and finding out you know, is it just me? Is it just me being discontent? Do I need to just like suck it up buttercup or is this the Lord actually leading me out? And so can you talk about that moment for you? Yeah, for sure. I feel like for me, the biggest confession that I had to make to this, my, my ministry team and the guys that I'm running with was I'm finding no joy in this anymore. Hmm. And so you talked about misery and joy I do think that we're, we're called to seek it out, right? To seek out joy and like find those places that are going to produce joy. And for me, there was no joy being produced in that place right. that I was at. And so it, it was, was kind of like, you're saying it was fruitless. It, it, for, yes. Okay. And that was a question too, that for me was like, is there any fruit, right? That they'll, they'll, you'll be judged by your fruit. You'll find too. And so I did find a place and a lot of this was pity party stuff of like, there's no fruit in my ministry. The only fruit is people leaving the church and people being pissed off at me and people having a hard time with prophecy and people not being encouraged. Like that's the kind of fruit that I saw. Yeah. I, I did have some good friends coming to me and say, bro, that's not the only fruit, you know, and that's always good, right? You want, yeah, right. We, we don't always see the good fruit. Like there's plenty of times that we're going to do things in this world that we don't get to experience the good fruit that so comes from those. Let me just make a distinction. I'm not saying that this is your experience by any means, but you know, 
I'm sure that there have been times and it's probably happened in my life and I can't pinpoint an exact situation, but I know that I have deep character flaws that the Lord is working on. And I believe that there may have been some instances where I was actually detrimental to something that was fruitful. And so I may have been prideful to look at it and say, there's no fruit and the, act, the reality was there's no fruit in me and I was blind to it. And the Lord then would have to remove me from that situation to do a work. And so I just, I, I think I want to say that because, you know, the Lord is filled with grace for all people. And so he may actually remove you from a situation to do a work in you. And it wasn't the ministry or the organization you were a part of. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I think that this is a good point to add in that God cares more about you, your soul and what he's doing in you than anything that you can accomplish inside of a ministry. Right. I mean, this is like the personhood of who you are versus what you can do for Christ. God doesn't, he is much more concerned about who you are becoming you yes. becoming more like Jesus, you right. becoming cleansed and pure, all, all of that stuff, who you are, your personhood than what you're accomplishing for his yeah. kingdom. And so he will absolutely pull you out of a situation in a heartbeat and not bat an eye that like this ball is going to get dropped over here or now person A, B, C is not going to come to Christ. Like it's not yeah. about that. Let, let me go on my mini destiny rant. Do it. So there's multiple scriptures about destiny and I'm not talking about the reformed theology of predestination. Get that corn out of my face. What I'm talking about is <laughs> what I'm talking about is um, those he foreknew. He also predestined, predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. Mm. So our destiny is to be conformed into the image of Christ. That is lifelong. That's from the moment that we come into knowledge and understanding and relationship of God, the creator. And then we're in process, man. From that point on, we're in relationship and it's lifelong, right? When a child is born into this world, the parents are not never not the parent of that child. If that makes, I just yes. triple negative, but, yeah. um, so we're in this relationship. The other one is that we are his, his crafts, his, uh, handiwork, right. Mm -hmm. Um, that, before the foundations of the earth, we were made in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he knew beforehand. I murdered that. But in essence, before we were even made, we were in Christ Jesus with good works to do in this life. And so the way that I break that down is that God's doing something in us, conforming us to the likeness of the image of his son. And God's doing something through us, the good works that we were created to do in Christ Jesus before the foundations of the earth. So it's always something in you and something through you. And so just because you're not in a place where God's doing something through you doesn't mean he's not doing something in you. For sure. And so Darren, it seems like you're in a place where the Lord's doing something in you. Permission yeah. to rest. You haven't had it for 20 years. Tell me what that's, what that's looking like for you now. So there's a lot of, I mean, another, another factor for this, like making this exit a reality for me was I've got a very full-time job, you know, 50 to 55 hours a week that I'm working. Oof, goodness. I come, I come home. I I'm really passionate about podcasting. I'm passionate about blogging and whoop, all whoop. that stuff. And I've got a wife and I've got three girls and I was in a ministry that man, three, just imagine what you could do without that wife and those three girls. I uh, know. Why just, did I choose to leave the church? <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's terrible. Just kidding, Jamie. Just wife. kidding, Jamie. Can't wait to meet you. Uh, I love my it. wife. Please, 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 please. If the feed gets cut off guys, we're yeah. good. <laughs> but I, I came to it of like, there's only so much time. And I, I For literally, sure. my wife's a big planner, a big scheduler. And we had a big old calendar on the, on our wall and every single day was filled with something. And three of those days was ministry. And it was like going into, um, you know, worship sets meetings. and prayer meetings and all of these things. Yep. And in my head, the fruit of all those ministry things was people pissed off at me. Like that was kind of the season that right. I was in for this. And I just had to look at everything and say, man, what am I passionate about? I'm passionate about building up and encouraging people. And for 20 some years of ministry, the only platform for that for me was working in the church. And yeah, now yeah. with podcasting and writing and different things, it's like, I can still be the prophetic voice that God's called me to be. I can still encourage the body yes. and actually do things that I love doing yes. and that I'm finding joy in. And of all those things, I got to keep my job. Yeah. I'm going to focus on my family 
and right. I want to do things that I'm passionate about. And I was yeah. losing the passion and the joy mm. to do church ministry. And that was yeah. kind of the, the, and I was invited into a place of let's clear up the calendar. Let's, let's take this coronavirus where it's at right now and actually eliminate some distractions, actually figure out what I want you to do next. And I didn't feel the pressure anymore to like go to church and be around this and do this and do this and do this. And I'm really in a place of rest right now. And I feel like for the first time ever, I have permission to just rest. Mm. Yeah. Gosh, you know, what's crazy, man is like, and I'm not, I, I'm just making an observation. You know, we have a lot of friends who are pastors in this city, you know, who are definitely so. like really just trying to seek God and just do whatever he's leading them to do. You know, we got some fresh new church plants in our city and, uh, and I see them doing all of these things like, and, I, and I know their hearts. I know they're doing what God is, you know, I believe that they're doing what God has told them to do. But I just look at the weight that a lot of our pastor friends carry and even other pastors that we don't know. And I just look at that and go, how long can you carry that? Like, how long can you carry that load before your soul and, and what Christ is doing in you is compromised? And I look at that and, and I just go, God, is this what, is this what God wants you to carry? Like, man, there's good things going on. Like God's, God's doing stuff in people's life, but could he still do that stuff outside of this weight that rely like has to be on your shoulder to where you're sacrificing your family, your health, your mental health, physical health on the altar of ministry, your relationships and all of this stuff. I just can't help but go like, ah, I just I wish you could experience this freedom that I felt and then maybe that Darren's feeling and that you're feeling. Um, I don't know. And I don't want to be the one that makes a judgment call and says, Oh, what you're doing is wrong. Like I'm not trying to do that at all. I'm just making an observation that like the, the load seems heavy. How long can you carry that? Yeah. I, I think the, the audience that you're addressing are the ones who have volunteers too, like even people who are like the ones who have actually entertained some of these thoughts, but then pushed them to the side because it's such a native or such a, uh, an alien idea for them to consider. What if I wasn't doing this? It's an alien narrative that they've never been given the freedom to entertain because the narrative they've been given is adamantly opposed to the one that they're considering. Does that make sense? Right. So that's a bit wordy to just say you, things have always been this way. I'm thinking about things being a different way, but I don't know anybody who's doing this or has done this. And I feel alone and worried and weird and fearful because, you know, is there something wrong with me? Am I going to be rejected? That kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's even kind of a fear in some people's hearts of like, I don't want to leave this platform because I may not, I I may never get it back. And I think that that's, that's something that, I mean, to be honest, any church platform is a platform that was given to you by people in the church, right? I mean, it's, if, if the Lord wants to use you, he's going to use you. And if we can come to the agreement that the Lord wants to use you, <laughs> then Which I think he, does. A, he does. Yeah. So we're yeah. in a good place. I want to address something you said earlier. You were talking about having this heart to equip and build up the body and prophesy and do these things. Like you're talking about gifts, right? Like yeah. Romans 12. It's, G-I-F-S. Yes. Gifts. Gifts. <laughs> Gah. Gah. Gifts. gifts. Let's talk about <laughs> not, our favorite not, gifs. Not, not peanut butter. So, <laughs> so Darren, what you're realizing is that your value to the body of Christ and your place within the body of Christ is not reliant upon whether or not you have a title or a paycheck or a platform. Yes. You're talking about who the Lord has made you to be his spirit, his seal placed upon you. And by that spirit coming and doing stuff in you, there is now something in you that wasn't there before. It's a gift and it's for the building up of the body of Christ and bringing his will on earth as it is in heaven, right? Romans 12 giftings. Uh, there's uh, gifts in, in Corinthians, but um, we did a podcast called the myths of full-time ministry. I think it was episode one of season three. And we talk a lot about this, that regardless of a paycheck or a title, you still have value to the body of Christ. For Just sure. because you're not getting a paycheck doesn't mean you're not a pinky toe. You know what I'm saying? So like you are valuable regardless. And so what you're realizing is that 
you know, there you were given platforms for the last 20 years within certain ministries to be able to use that gift for the body of Christ. But now the Lord is, has moved you into a place of rest. And that doesn't mean that you still can't be valuable to the body. So it's just a different place, but it's still, you're still the same person with the same value. And I think that's what a lot of people need to hear. So maybe if you can, Speak to those people or that person that's listening, that's saying, you know, I don't know what that's, I don't know that life, bro. Yeah. So here's the deal. (laughs) I, you know, I've got a lot of friends too, that are in this season, like during Corona, it's time for the church to rise up and it's time for the church to go. And I get that. And I do believe that the kingdom is not okay. I don't believe with attack on its people. It's not okay with sickness. It's not okay with, with death and those things. And as a kingdom carrier, I do believe that we have the authority over those things, but if there's not rest and if there's not like a place where you are getting alone with the Lord and, and spending time allowing him to build you up Moses walked around the wilderness for 40 years, right? The people walked around for 40. David had to run away and like run for his life and encourage himself in the Lord. And so I do believe like for me personally, I'm in a place of rest, but I am like, there's something coming. Like as a, as a big C church right now with this shutdown and with everything's being questioned, like, I think this is going to change the church forever. Am oh, I opinion. agree. One hundred percent. And I don't want us to be in a place of we're slumbering for the rest of our lives. You know, I don't want this to be a thing where the church like sleeps and stays asleep. Like there's going to be a rise up moment. But I think that so many people are in that place of ministry where they feel like this is what it looks like. Going, 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 going. No Sabbath. (laughs) No this. No that. Yeah. And it's just not true. Like we've got to be encouraged (laughs) and we've got to be restful because there is going to be a time for us to rise up. I don't know if that answered your question, but I think that there are people that you, I mean, if, if I'll put it this way, if the people of the church aren't going to give you time to rest, then you need to get time to rest. Yeah. Like maybe it's time to step away because you haven't had a time to rest. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is that, you know, as we've been, as I've been going, 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 dealing with this issue that we're dealing with in our family, um, I have somebody who's very close to me that I very much value their prophetic voice in my life. And it's, it's Christine, your sister-in-law, Jason. Um, and one of the things that she felt like God was, I mean, I I guess if you want to talk about a word, God having a word for me, it's that I need to rest. Rest. You've been going, going, going for the last two weeks. You have to rest. This is in my hands. It's not in your hands. You need to stop. Mm. That's so counter to what our world has said, though, because um, if you're doing anything for the kingdom of God, it involves doing like you can exist and not do anything and do things for the Human kingdom of God. Being. It's a weird, it's a weird kind of oxymoron that the best thing that you can do is nothing. <clears throat> right. Like it's, it's so counter cultural and even Christian like church culture here. But I agree, man. I think the church is going to be forever changed by this. Um, I don't think a lot of people think about that. You know, my hope is that, um, we just won't cling to an old wine skin if God's trying to do something new and that we'll just, we'll just be aware of what, what he wants to do. So we're totally different. I, I quoted Dallas Willard from a blog that old Derek Shore sent me. I saw that it was good. There's nothing that requires more energy for the typical American Christian than the discipline of doing nothing. The hardest thing you can get anyone to do is nothing. And so help, help me understand. And I think you kind of gave a definition to this, but I I don't know that some people truly understand the concept of rest. It doesn't mean just doing nothing really, but it's sometimes it just means doing something new, doing something that you've never done before, doing something a different way than you've ever done. So how would you describe the rest that you're experiencing? Um, again, like we didn't leave the church. We didn't leave these relationships, but with COVID-19, we haven't been to church. (laughs) And so it it just kind of worked out that way to where I stepped away and I haven't been going to church, but I do think that. So for me personally, I'm, I'm able now to focus on some things that bring me joy, focus on some things that I have desire. And I want to say this, and I don't want it to be like super critical and I'm not calling any particular person out, but I think there's a lot of 
preachers and pastors that have been doing ministry for so long, they don't know how to do it away from the church. Yeah. And I think, and I, and there's, I've, you know, I know people that like, they do their, they do their ministry very well and they do their, their stuff very well, but they don't know how to sit and worship with their family at home. And they don't know how to sit and pray with their wives. And I feel like what this has done has forced us to do that. And we're still seeing some, some churches and some leaders are refusing to even do that. And it's like, can we just, I'm not saying forever, can we just rest? And really, I just feel like that's what the Lord's calling the, the big C church into right now as a place of rest. And I do believe it's because there's a, there's a war that he wants us to fight, but he's not going to send us out there if we haven't rested. And mm. so I'm prepared to rise up. And I'm prepared to like be the prophetic voice that he's called me to be. But if I don't give myself that time to rest and let him build me up the and way that he wants for me his to green light for him to go. All right. Darren, that's exactly now, right. Yeah. You know, that's exactly the, yeah. right. I just want to give permission to anyone who may feel like they are in a situation under the authority of a pastor, um, under someone who is maybe advising them to do things that um, are counter to what you think God may actually be saying, man, you have permission to seek God and do whatever he says. Like man is not your authority. Like God has, has placed people over us that can um, help lead us, guide us. You know, these are people that may be shepherds or voices in our lives, but listen, everyone out there with a the microphone and a Bible and a podium doesn't it doesn't mean that they're seeking God. Sometimes man pushes their own agenda, unfortunately. And I've been guilty of that in the past too, of pushing my agenda. Like you have permission to seek God and do whatever he's leading you to do. And guess what? If he leads you to do something, do it. Even if you get pushback from anyone else, like that is where your um, obedience lies not to man, not to fear of man, but to God in doing whatever he's leading you to do. And it may look different. It may look like nothing you've ever seen before. You may only have one step, but that one step is all that you need. And you may not get the rest of the steps until you take that one. So just do not live in fear of taking whatever steps God is calling you to take. And it can be okay to step back um, in opposition of what maybe your leaders are telling you to do. If you believe God is telling you to do something. Heresy, heresy. <laughs> I want to I I add something to that because I feel it, like it, I just kind of feel it in my spirit that there's, there's people that, um, that permission word is just so big right now for me that the Lord's giving us permission to like learn, giving us permission to seek him. And there is, there's such a desire for people to just have all the answers and know everything. And so for me, a lot of this rest too, is like, you're invited into a place where you don't have to have all the answers. Oh, that's good. And it's okay to not have the answers. And so what do you do then? If you don't have the answers, we're not called to not seek the answers. Like we should be seeking truth, but if I don't have the answers, cause it, I think we talked about it earlier, maybe even before we started recording, but people have a tendency to like, say, God said this. And so they, they defend yeah. their decision to step, step away, or they defend their decision to rest by saying, well, this will get them. God said to do it. Well, maybe so, but oh, dang, I think, you're right. he I wins. think he wins. the tendency there that is like, I better have a solid answer and a reason why, right. you know? And For it's sure. like, it's okay to just say, you know what? I'm really feeling joyless right now. <laughs> and that's what I had to do is like, guys, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have, I think they were all waiting for this big prophetic moment of like, God showed up in my shower and he said that today is the day. You know, it's, that's not what it was. It was like, I don't have joy in this right now. Like I, I actually want joy in my life. Yeah. God, you know? pass me the conditioner since you're here. <laughs> yeah, honey, I need to change conditioners because this one's just not good speaking anymore. So it's full no, of sulfates. It, <laughs> glyphosate. But I don't know if that made sense, but I feel like no, there's makes total sense. I think it's like, it's okay. I don't have the answers, man. Like the church doesn't have the answer of, of how COVID-19 is going to affect people's lives. They don't mm -hmm. like, I do believe in the authority that we carry the, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives inside of me. And that I can stand at that storm and I can speak to it. But I also know that Jesus slept in the boat and that didn't make a whole right. lot of sense. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm in a place right now of snap. laying my head down in the middle of the storm and being okay with that. Yep. Yeah. Well, it was the fear of the disciples that woke Jesus up 
And he's like, you have little faith, you know, and there's also, you know, Jesus only does what he sees the father doing. And just because we have authority, um, doesn't mean that it's that now is the time to use that authority. Right. Like just because Jesus had the authority to speak to the storm and bring peace doesn't mean that he has to use it every time or that the storm will come. Right. I mean, and so there, there are things Yay, that I mean, I know, study. I know people that are like, you know, sitting on Facebook live and, and rebuking and calling down and doing all sorts of stuff. And it's just like, yeah, you can do all that stuff. And maybe in some sense we have that authority, but only when it's God's will and only when the father is leading you to do those things. If you're just doing stuff to try to do it, like, do you really have authority or are you just warring against God and what he wants to play out? Like yeah. there, there, it's a real <clears throat> fine line. And that's why it's so important to only do what you feel like God is leading you to do. I if will start, speak, I will speak to this. Cause I don't, I mean, I do feel like sickness and death. Like I have permission all the time. I feel like sure. to speak against well, you're those wrong, things. Darren. Yeah. You're wrong. So Darren, I'm speaking. <laughs> so I'm standing firm against COVID-19 sure. because people are dying and yeah. losing their jobs. And that's not God's will. I believe that hundred percent, but I promise you that it's not just so that the church can go back to meeting on Sundays for like, sure. Yeah. That's why I'm not praying against it that way. I'm like, people are dying. <clears throat> God is not cool with that. Yeah. COVID-19 be done in yeah, Jesus the, name. The spirit of the Lord doesn't yeah. breed death. I mean, it right. breeds life. So Darren, um, you have the opportunity to give a final word of encouragement, or even if the Lord would rise up in you to give a prophetic word to the people that are listening, what, what can you say to them to close? Yeah. I, I know that there's a lot of people that are listening that probably, um, go to church that probably have a relationship with the Lord and they're, they're questioning what their calling is. They're questioning what their place is. And I just want you to know that no one's ever going to show you that except for the Holy Spirit. Like the Holy Spirit's going to draw those things out of you and you'll know what it is. The benefit of like what I get to do and what I feel called to do is to help people see those things. So I actually get to look into people's hearts and find things that they don't even know are there, pull them out stick them in their face and say, this is who you are. Like you are worthy. You were created in his image to be powerful, to be light in the darkness. And so I can pull those things out. And I just think that all of us can do a better job of that. All of us can do a better job of encouraging the people in our circle of influence yeah. and not being afraid yeah. to lift other people above ourselves. Like this should be an to, to honor people is to like see the goodness in them mm. and pull it out and not be af so many. And I'll just say I like this that definition. So many, so many ministers are so scared of people rising up and actually knowing who they are. I feel like when I first stepped out of the church, the Lord kind of showed me this. I feel like I had some revelation as far as if the church really preached freedom, then the people wouldn't have to come back. The people wouldn't feel Ooh. the need to come back. And that was very humbling to me of like, I'm not saying there's a bunch of evil people that are refusing freedom, but I do believe as human beings, there's this thing inside of most leaders. That's like, man, if I really set them free, are they going to come back and tithe? Are they going to come back and, and, and need me here in this place? Yeah. We can't think that way. Like, I want Jason and I want Chris to be everything God's called them to be. And if I'm running with you guys, if I'm in a relationship with someone that, that is just called for greatness, man, I want to launch them into that place. And I think that we all have the responsibility to call out the gold in people Amen. and not be afraid of the consequences of it. That's good. So you are for our success and you would be okay with us having a hundred times the listeners that you would ever have on your podcast. This, this episode. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, hey, so for our listeners out there, I just need you to know, go to Facebook and check out the, uh, the Facebook replay of this video. So Darren's shirt says bear tooth, but he had been sitting in a way that all I saw was ear toot the whole time. <laughs> and ear so, toot. Oh, I like that. I just need you to know that there's, 
There. A funny little thing going on on Facebook there. Man, Darren, we're so <laughs> – there you go, Beartooth. Hey, dude, we're super glad that you got to come on. Uh, yeah, you'll man. be hearing more of Darren. Um, he's a good friend of ours. and, and Some good stuff in the works. Good thanks stuff for, in the thanks works. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate yeah, it very yeah, much. Yeah, for real, man. Thank you for sharing your story. And I'm just excited about where the Lord has you and what he's teaching you. You know, as you were sharing some of your story through Facebook Messenger to me the other day, uh, I was just, you know, kind of not laughing but just – Joyful because I've been through somewhat of a similar experience and Christopher has too. And, you know, we're not, we're not saying that everybody's going to reach this point to where they're going to leave the ministry or leave the gathering, anything like that. But I hope we are. Yeah. What we are saying is that there will be people who need this season in their life and the Lord will ordain this season in their life and that it's okay to explore it. And so super glad that you got to come on and talk about that and encourage our listeners. You got any final words, man? Uh, I, I don't, I don't think I have any final words. <clears throat> Stay safe, be healthy, connect to the Lord. That's all I got, man. What about you? I just don't want people to live in fear, man. That's my big thing. Like fear, gosh, fear just breeds like you can. And, I, and I've been talking to my mom about this and my dad a little bit, but like you can, you can stay informed and be aware of what's going on. Like uh-huh. there's a fine line between being informed about things in the world and between like living in fear and breeding fear, like mm-hmm. your heart and your environment becoming an environment where this stuff is just like breeding, like an infection, a cesspool and, of fear. Yeah. A cesspool of fear. And so it's like, that's not what God's got for you. Like you can be informed, stay aware of what, you know, the president and your government, your government, local governments are saying and take action. That is wise. Seek the Lord, do whatever he says, but you don't have to live in fear and you don't have to partner with that stuff. Like that's my big, I'm, I'm on a big kick up with that right Amen. now. So I know that really doesn't have to do with this episode, but don't live in fear guys. And when you begin to feel that rise up, man, go to God and that, just have a conversation. That's a about strong, it. that's a strong word, Chris. Don't partner with fear. How are, how are people, how do people avoid partnering with it? Like, what is that? There's strength in that. For sure. I just need you to maybe say a couple more words on it. Uh, so, I mean, the way that I don't partner with fear is I literally tell myself, like, I'm not going to partner with that. Like, I refuse to partner with fear. I refuse to give that um, a voice in my life or influence in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I go and trade that out for something else. Um, trade yeah. that out for hope in the Lord, trade that out for, um, joy, hope. I mean, normally it's hope. I mean that I'm kind of doing, it's like, I'm not going to give into that. I'm going to trade this out for faith, hope, joy, peace, all of that stuff. And what I mean by trading, it's literally, I'm just going to God being like, Hey, I don't, I don't want this. I'm, I don't want to partner with fear. I want to latch on to something different. Right. What hope. you have, what you say. Right. Yeah. The things of God replacing. So, yeah. So it's a trading. It's stuff. a replacing my Can wife. I add something. Yes. Go to that. So the fear thing, I think that's kind of a hot topic right now too, right? Faith over fear. And I think the first step in, in not partnering with fear is recognizing that it, that it exists. I think so many times we don't even want to embrace the reality that I'm scared of something or that I'm right. fearful of something. And by doing that, we're actually easily going to fall into its trap. So I think that's, that's a good point, Chris, of like, I don't want to partner with it. First step is saying I'm freaking scared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, and so I missed that point. Sometimes I'll say before I do that, Hey, I'm guilty of this. I'll own it. Like yeah. I have given mm-hmm. this a foothold in my life. I don't want that anymore. Right. Lord, like yep. that's not what I want to continue. I don't want to continue down this path. Right. So that's, that's, good. that's really good. Point. That goes back to asking the Lord to judge the thoughts and the attitudes of your heart, bringing it, submitting it, and then saying, you know, give me what you have to say. Uh, I'll say one last thing and we can, we can shut it down. My wife Kim's really good about, um, encouraging me not to speak death. So like, I'll say something and she's like, you're speaking death, you know? And so you told me recently about an instance where somebody in your life was making statements of death. And you say, you know what? I reject those words. Like, I'm not going to partner with that. Right. I'm not going to agree with that. Right. Where two or more agree. Like there's power in that stuff, man. For and sure. so we have to make sure which side we're on and whose side we're, we're partnering on. It should be the Lord's side. These are the Lord's chips. <laughs> Did you tell them that they were the Lord's chips? Oh. I want to win. I want to be the best. Eagle legs. Dude, we we can't go <laughs> two episodes without having without a Nacho Libre. Nacho Libre quote. It's so. such a good movie. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm awesome. hands down. That's probably. Hey, f- go ahead. Hey, Darren, where can people find you online? You can go to kingdombringer.com. You can check out the Kingdom Bringer podcast on every platform. Rate, review, subscribe, and share. That would be awesome. And you can email me at Darren 
D-A-R-I-N at kingdombringer.com. I'd love to hear from you. Let's chat. Also, hey, hey, if someone was going to go, like, what's your favorite episode that you recorded lately if you were going to point people to an episode? Because sometimes so, it can be overwhelming when you go check out a new podcast right. for you to point someone and say, hey, guys, go check out this one. Might so be a I, had more a, helpful. I had a good episode a couple weeks ago with Josh Littlejohn, a buddy of mine. We talk about the coronavirus and kind of talk about some of these realities and being okay with uh, being truthful mm, amid this good. crisis right now. So check out, uh, I think it's called... I forget what it's called, but it's got coronavirus in the title and it's Josh Little Drum. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Go to kingdombringer.com and look for the donate tab and go give as much money as you can possibly give to Darren. If you're getting a stimulus check, you better just donate it to Darren's podcast. There is, I will say this honestly, there's a limit of a million dollars. So if you're questioning, I'll I'll cut it off. Darren, I was trying to give a million and one dollars on your website and it's kicking me out. it's a million per person. So. Oh, okay. All right. Sure. Sign up as a different name. We're good. But seriously, we're, we're for you, bro. We're for what you're Heck doing. Yeah. And, and uh, we're excited to see more to come. So, all right, Salty Dogs listeners, you know the deal. Check out SaltyDogsPodcast.com. Rate and review, comment, subscribe, share, like, do the whole thing. Wash your hands, cheese bags. <laughs> Stay fresh, cheese bags. Salty Dogs. Out. Out. Peace.